my video, please? Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to IFMSA EB's uh, update webinar coming before March meeting. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us uh, today. And um, I'm here with other members of the executive board. Uh, my name is Nabi Shonikovic. I'm the IFMSA president. Uh, together with me, I have Sonia. Hi, I am Sonia Silsrivati, and I am Vice President for Activities for this term, and it's nice to join you all. Hello, I'm Gabriela Cipriano. I'm the current Vice President for Finances, and I'm very happy to be joining this webinar with you. Uh, hello again for those who've seen uh, yesterday's webinar. Uh, my name is Paulina, and uh, I'm Vice President for Members for this term. Hi everyone, my name is Tarak Zin and I'm the Vice President for External Affairs. In case you notice that I'm not wearing a suit because I'm going back home and my plane is in four hours. Hello everyone, I am Haider Nouri and I'm Vice President for Capacity Building. Hello again, I'm Saad. I'm IFMSA Vice President for Public Relations and Communication and I'm happy to see you today. So this is the second webinar we are doing as the executive board before the General Assembly uh, to uh, help you familiarize with all of the documents and all of the work uh, that is happening uh, in the IFMSA. The main goals of this uh, webinar is to uh, help us uh, having interactive uh, and pres interactive president sessions focused uh, on the decision making, focus on gathering input and the discussion uh, instead of having a uh, one way presentation when we uh, deliver the updates to you. So we are trying to provide everything in advance so you can uh, get prepared and then we can discuss uh, things uh, on a spot when we meet in Rwanda. Uh, and also with this webinar, we would like to give you the better understanding uh, of uh, the work that is being done by the executive board uh, together with the team of officials and our international teams. Uh, of course, we are not able to go through every area and every part of work that we are doing, but uh, today we would like to update you on the most important, uh, most important things that you need to know before the GA. And uh, the content of today's presentation is um, on, first I will talk about uh, members updates uh, related to the membership, then uh, communication and public relations, update about social media, about uh, approaching March meeting 2020, as well as August meeting 2020, uh, programs and activities, secretariat, finances, capacity building and external affairs. So uh, starting from members, uh, one of the important things to uh, know before the GA is uh, the recruitment part, as we will be 
we will be um, seeing uh, the applications candidatures of uh, new members. Uh, we have uh, seven um, submissions of for the candidate membership and one for the uh, membership upgrade. The work uh, since uh, the beginning of the term, we were working with the regional directors on supporting uh, the, those organizations to uh, apply. Um, as I hope you know, uh, we also had the membership review committee that was working mainly uh, during December and the membership review committee uh, was checking those applications and uh, the report had been shared uh, by January 1st and as a result, uh, our, uh, the organizations had a chance to amend their applications and send the missing documents or clarify some parts that may not be so clear in the first uh, submission. Uh, in addition to that, we, uh, as, the, as the EB produced the um, membership review re reports uh, and uh, also um, uh, regional directors provided a report for you on the candidate members that they are working with. So uh, the members that uh, joined IFMSA recently and are still in the development process. Uh, additionally to that, there is something new that we did this year for the, uh, for the memberships, uh, which is the report on suspended members, because we feel that uh, animals that are not um, currently are their status is suspended uh, may need some support uh, and also we needed to provide transparency uh, in the whole process uh, therefore we decided to provide you with the information about uh, the communication with those animals the issues that they are facing and also the follow-up plan from the animal side and also from the uh, rd side um, additionally, related to the GA, what I wanted to say is that uh, the animal report had been shared with you and uh, this year we received the highest uh, number of uh, responses ever, 126, which means that only one animal did not fill it on time, the rest of you uh, filled it, so uh, thank you so much for your support. And uh, the, uh, the information had been shared with the, uh, with the relevant officials, so you can be sure that we are using this info to make the Federation working better. Uh, as you know, we have a TO animal body system, and uh, even though we stayed in the same topics, we made the new, uh, new division this year, so you are uh, grouped with other animal and maybe with other TO contact person. Uh, we are working on the outline of the body session during March meetings, so uh, be sure that you bring your delegates and uh, join the session made by your TO body. Uh, the main difficulty for the TO animal body system is related to getting in touch uh, with the animals and uh, starting the involvement of the animals within the group work. So that's something we need to work together with you to have improved until August. Uh, as you know, uh, the three of the regional meetings already happened, the African regional meeting in Malawi, America's regional meeting in Brazil and Eastern Mediterranean regional meeting in Jordan. Uh, for the president sessions, we uh, are following up on the format, uh, the updated format of the sessions. So our main idea is to have less presentations and more time for questions uh, and discussions. Uh, this is why we are providing you uh, this webinars and sharing all of the documents in advance. So we are going to have a lot of question and answer sessions. Uh, we will have uh, four open space discussions led by the NMOs. Uh, on the topics that you find very important. And also, in addition to uh, all of the sessions about discussing the future of the IFMSA, discussing what's going to happen on the plenaries, we also will have some parts related to capacity building and experience sharing, as that's something that, uh, from the feedback we had, was lacking on the president sessions in the past. And we hope that this way is going to be even more beneficial for you. Uh, related to the strategy part that should, is, is VPM is responsible for uh, is the online modules uh, on um, external affairs together with the VPE and financial management together with the VPF. And uh, this year the online modules are mainly supervised by VPCB. 
what I wanted to add is that to those two modules, we are also going to create the course on organizational development for the animals to support you in uh, managing your uh, organizations. And uh, that's uh, the, the part of the update from the VPM. And if you will be having any questions, uh, just um, at the end of this webinar, we will have a space where you can ask uh, all the EB members questions. And also uh, after the webinar, I'm free to, uh, I will be happy to answer that. Hello, everyone. Um... It's me again. So I will be presenting you some updates about what uh, we have done together in like the public relation and communication of the IFMC. Um, I need to start first by talking about the team behind uh, public relation and communication and how it was really important to um, remodel it and to put uh, the values and to lead by values like we have now in some empowered position we shift some tasks to some assistant and as like the capacity building modules uh, went for the development assistant to align with other uh, practices in standing committees um, next please uh, we also worked on um, like supporting our data protection initiatives since uh, 2018 and 2019. I can say we worked um, to um, promote and protect um, members' data. So first, it started with the officials and IT preparation with all the registry and the procedure. Uh, we are pretty happy with what's happening right now. Uh, we also had uh, great responsiveness, both from PRC team, VPPRC, but also the officials and the IT concerning the forms and the data collection. Um, second point was about the mandates um, by NMOs during last term to discuss the GDPR and the data protection between tasks and responsibilities between SAPCO and executive board we will be having the reports uh, sent um, during the next days and with the clear division of task between executive board and sub supervising council. Next, please. Also, what's um, really new this term, we are trying to align with um, practices in standing committees and in other um, structures. So we are starting developing resources and uh, promoting trainings and session during a GA, but also during regional meeting. Um, you will see during this March meeting, we'll have a session on branding during uh, the president session, but also some session about social media management, uh, creative writing and storytelling in standing committee sessions. Uh, we also started the webinars, especially the Moodle platform for international team um, to give them the tools um, to use this Moodle to create online training and courses for members. Next. Uh, also talking about the workshops in the past years, uh, we had one workshop called the Spread It. It was not streamlined, not, um, uh, didn't have very clear objectives. Uh, after reviewing the expected outcomes, but also the needs of the Federation of the NMOs, it's come uh, very clear for us that we need two types of trainings. Uh, we need the workshop that will build the capacities for national uh, PR and communication officers, but also a workshop for the members to be able to apply this knowledge about campaigning, about social media, about branding in their local activities. So we will be proposing two different workshops before August meeting on these two topics. Next. Uh, yeah, so for the next slides, I will mainly talk about the marketing strategy uh, developed last term, and it, it's like the main guiding document of our efforts. Um, yeah, next slide. First is about uh, how we are trying to align our overall look and feel. And uh, I would really like to congratulate standing committee directors, liaison officer, and other members who work together to streamline the overall image of IFMC in social media, but also propose templates easy to use for the members and the international teams. Next slide. 
Uh, and this was uh, mainly done because we uh, uh, are using a dedicated software, the Canva account with a dedicated um, section with templates, logos, and also the palettes. And it made it easier for us also to propose amendments and to um, um, streamline all our content. Um, the next big project that we are working on right now is the uh, website renewal. Um, we worked with this copy team and scory team um, to uh, propose a comprehensive um, uh, website, uh, the IFMC org that uh, we need. So we benchmark the current structure and we uh, put together a comprehensive document uh, with all the future that we want to have in this website. Um, uh, please uh, keep, um, uh, we will keep you updated uh, during the president session in the website renewal update. Um, talking about the website, as you know, we are trying to have more content and also strong SEO. Uh, so we are proposing articles, we are proposing press release, but also campaigns and we are trying to um, strengthen our internal links. Next. Uh, more content, but also updated content. And this was um, a main challenge in um, dealing with the website. We have a lot of outdated content. So the first step was to track every page on the ifmc.org and to propose uh, changes and to update information, whether uh, it was like um, contact information or information about programs, about policies, um, etc. Um, we also try to connect with our members and partners and alumni uh, via our uh, newsletter that was sent uh, three times during the last months. Um, and we also had a special edition for our biggest event, the pre-WHA, with um, very clear and very user-friendly um, uh, description about this event. The next point is about the MSI, the Medical Student International, as an official and main um, IFMC magazine. We tr try to uh, respect its core values to be like this creative hub for members, the inclusiveness in selecting articles, to be entertaining, but at the same time, very informative and evidence-based, and um, um, to propose to you a digital content. I'm happy to announce that we um, received more than 220 application and submission for this MSI, and the team is working hard to uh, propose the final outcome by March meeting. I will just go over um, the social media management. Uh, we are using this table to track all our um, efforts and our uh, outreach on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the website and the YouTube channel. We have a very uh, steady um, enhancement. Next slide, please. So uh, either for Facebook, we went from 162 to 167,000 likes and also for Instagram. Next slide, please. Twitter, uh, we are now having more than 2,200 followers compared to a 26K follower in August meeting. Instagram, 18K. Um, next. Next slide. So um, generally, uh, we are planning to also have um, streamlined publications. So we are discussing with um, sending committee directors how to differentiate between what's a survival kit, what's a follow-up 
kids, etc. We are uh, joining the efforts in making survival kits um, for our members. As you have already seen, we have the joint survival kit for animal management and also um, the uh, um, standing committees. And we also try to have the Zoom platform for your webinars. And we work to enhance the quality of live stream and GAs by um, um, purchasing new devices for audio quality. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Seth. Now a few updates about March meeting and August meeting, respectively. So for the March meeting, um, we continue the process of restructuring the agenda with uh, the current TO after the work done uh, in the last year. Uh, for the March meeting, we reviewed all the agendas in the past five terms and uh, drafted an initial proposal that had uh, taken into account all the needs of the major sessions we had. Uh, we have based on uh, the issues in the past terms uh, and uh, recommendations from past officials. Um, after that, we discussed them in uh, Tom 2 and uh, made the final proposal that uh, well, final agenda that you can now see in the survival kits and uh, otherwise. Uh, we took into account also the mandate uh, on inclusive social events and tricking responsibilities. So that's why you can already see when each social will social event will be happening. And NFDP is on a day when we do not have any plenaries, to followed up by a break that is uh, the next day. Uh, we <clears throat> we made major changes to IFMSA fringe, um, well, some sessions, uh, including IFMSA fringe, which is now happening uh, during evening hours after the plenary. It doesn't have uh, a fixed spot in the agenda as it had previously. For the team event, uh, we uh, we have two sessions on the team event. The first one is uh, a regular panel event, but the second team event will have six different um, sessions, all tackling uh, universal health coverage uh, based off uh, other uh, ways of assigning committees and the perspective on UHC because uh, UHC is an overarching uh, concept in our global priorities and and um, basically everyone is able to work on this. Uh, other than that, we um, made more CB time uh, in the sense of uh, in addition to capacity building planner, we now also have capacity building discussions uh, and uh, we ensure that capacity building uh, planner follows the standards. Uh, of IFMSA plenary, uh, and um, it is uh, however happening in parallel with activity sphere, but uh, that is because it will be limited in its capacity. Another major change uh, is happening for exchanges sphere, which uh, for now is happening in parallel with other sessions, and exchanges sphere will uh, be uh, exchanges fair, uh, will only be limited to those participants of Scopy and Scori. Uh, more information is on the animal server shared by uh, SCORI and SCOPD. Um, uh, after the GA, we will review all sessions and analyze them uh, directly in order to make sure that they met their intended objectives because our time is limited at the GA and we want to make sure that all sessions we have are objective-based and uh, that they are achieving those objectives. Otherwise, we need to revise them or completely remove them. Uh, next slide. And um, uh, finally, uh, for the August meeting 2020, we had three calls. Uh, and in the last call, we had applications from MOMC Montenegro, IFMSA Pakistan, MSA Northern Macedonia, and IFMSA Panama. Uh, in, in this manner as well, we would like to thank all uh, candidates uh, who created their um, candidatures and uh, followed our instructions. Uh, thank you for wishing to host uh, IFMSA in your countries. Uh, we, Want to recognize all their efforts and um, we wish them success in the next uh, applications for the GA. Uh, however, we could only choose uh, one uh, NMO to host August mid 2020, and that was IFMSA Panama. They're going to be uh, there's going to be a session as well as a presentation in the plenary by IFMSA Panama uh, to give you more updates on the, their work and preparations. For now, uh, EB is uh, following up uh, on uh, their work to find a person who is now VTF, uh, Gabriella. And that's it. Thanks. Perfect. Uh, moving on to activities. Uh, the next slide. Okay. Uh, the next slide. Um, the next slide. Uh, so currently, we have a request for 
affiliations from 120 active different active uh, 290 different activities and these are the activities that program coordinators have been working to enroll in past four months for the Rex Crossley Award, we have uh, 84 registered activity uh, or 84 entries that we received, out of which top 10 were selected, and they have been informed about the selection. Uh, also, in upcoming times on IFMSA social media, mainly Facebook page, you can uh, see a bit more of promotion about um, Rex Crossley at the top 10 selected activities for Rex Crossley Awards. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, we have changed a little bit the format of Rex Crossley Awards uh, presentation, which happens in during the March me which happens in during the GA and this time during March meeting. Until uh, last year, the presenters had five minutes to present and three minutes of question answer round. And in order to make the entire process a bit more interactive, what we are doing this year is reducing the presentation time to three minutes and having question answers for five uh, minutes. And how do we plan to take question answers? The question answers will be from the panel of judges. It will be from the live audience and uh, questions would also be there from NMOs and along with the support person for Rex Crossley Awards and activities where we have prepared an information booklet. This information booklet along with the Google form will be shared this week uh, to the on the NMO server. and reading the information in the information booklet about the top 10 activities, you can ask questions to these activity presenters. And um, these questions and along with the questions from the panel of judges and the live questions would be answered by the presenters in these five minutes. Uh, so this is the small change that we are doing in regards to Rex Crossley Awards. Uh, regarding activities fair, it almost remains the same as past years. Uh, moving on, the next slide. Regarding uh, IFMSC programs, uh, since the beginning of the term, along with the standing committee directors, uh, we have been able to have a good coordinated and integrated way of working. And thus program coordinators have been working with standing committees from the beginning of the year. Uh, they would also be part of sessions team in March meeting 2020. Uh, along with that, we are also working with SCORI uh, until the first half. and thus marks the entry of programs with IFMSA exchanges. Um, we have a sort of integrated internal programs promotion strategy, and that is helping in streamlining entire program promotions that happen uh, during IFMSA meetings and as well as online and offline. And uh, we are working on basis of this strategy. Uh, we have had indirect promotions uh, because there were no program coordinators present in these regional meetings uh, through standing committee directors present therein and sessions team present therein at the regional meeting for Africa's and America's regional meeting. We had program promotion. Uh, we had a program coordinator and program support assistant attending EMR regional meeting. And uh, with that, there was direct promotion of programs in the EMR regional meeting. We will be having a lot of program promotions in March meeting as well. We have have uh, we have ten program coordinators attending March meeting and three program coordinators. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, the technical updates regarding programs. The first is modified enrollment form. There were few questions which were pretty redundant, and these questions weren't used in any sort of data analysis. So these questions have been removed. So we have. A comprehensive and bit more condensed uh, new enrollment form format. And uh, it's combined enrollment form, which is working now for three years. Uh, the same format with few edited questions. That is the major update regarding the enrollment form. Uh, we can see that it has eased a bit uh, the process of enrollment. And also it will assist in data analysis and analyzing the content therein. We also have modified candidature form for this term with signs of, uh, with the required signature of NMO precedents. Um, the major update for March meeting is change in the name of the program HIV slash AIDS and other STIs to HIV and AIDS and other STIs. This is in regards to the change in 
the name of SCORA, August, in the August meeting, and as well in regards to the modern terminology used. Um, upcoming plans, uh, before March meeting, you will see a PC quarterly report out. And also there would be, we would be releasing a combined report form as we have the combined enrollment form and immediate post March meeting, you can finally have an updated program toolkit. Um, these are the updates related to IFMC programs. Uh, where can you meet a programs team or program coordinators? You can find program coordinators in upcoming March meeting in standing committee morning sessions. Uh, you can also find the program coordinators conducting sessions in Africa's, Americas, and uh, Asia Pacific regional session. The at activity fair program coordinators will be interacting actively with activity coordinators. And also there will be a presentation station for programs team. So feel free to come and talk with the program coordinators there if you have any questions related to ISMSA programs. Um, moving on to the secretariat. Uh, there have been two visits from my end to the IFMSA secretariat in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, also, IFMSA secretary joined uh, the IFMSA officials at Tom2 in Croatia. Um, what have we have been working majorly in the first half of the term, we could say, is submission of EB registration documents to the bank. We have also received uh, preliminary information about bank account, and we are waiting for final activation and starting the work with the bank account. Um, we also have had two visits by the auditing firm to our office in Denmark. We have had one meeting with the lawyer to discuss upcoming issues for the March meeting. Uh, pretty fruitful one. Uh, and finally, we could say there is a good balance of task distribution between IFMSA secretary and BPA for the submissions, and that has helped with the workload considerably. Uh, moving on, regarding the future plans for the secretariat, um, we are formally working for the expansion of the secretariat after March meeting. Uh, we have a bit of a plan, but we are just waiting to check up uh, the logistical requirements of it and uh, the possibilities of it. So that is a major thing that will be happening in upcoming time until August meeting. After this, along with VPF, we are also working on a possibility to have bookkeeping shifted to Denmark. It is uh, something that is required as per working rules in Denmark for organization as big as IFMC. Uh, we are also looking forward to have a liability insurance for IFMC secretary and IFMC EB. This was something that we have had in past when we were registered in Denmark. We are just searching for a um, Danish equivalent. And we are also looking to possibly have visa support for IFMC officials and for other IFMC meetings. Um, it's a long process but we have started the talks. Uh, we exactly don't know how the outcome is going to be, uh, but uh, we will be keeping the talks on. So these are the updates regarding the secretariat. Uh, if you don't know, our IFMSA secretary who works in IFMSA secretariat is Ms. Ms. Yvonne Christensen, and you can email her at gs at the rate ifmsa.org. Thank you. Hello everybody, uh, everyone again. Uh, Sunny, I mentioned we have been working really hard for the banking registration for this year. Uh, the new bank that is going to take us in Denmark is called Mercur Andel Kasse. I'm sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, also, what ha what I have been working on is the first is a quarter first report that was shared with the NMO that corresponds to all the income and expenses that were generated by the Federation from October 1st to uh, December 31st. Also, uh, during EB meetings, there has been like a thorough uh, uh, budget reporting uh, to keep track of every expense and income as well. Uh, this uh, this first part of the term, we have been uh, working with the IFMC officials to get grants, and we have good news. We have received three. Uh, um, to this date, which are the IPAS grant, the universal, universal health coverage grant, and a grant from WHO MRO to work on antimicrobial resistance. Each of these uh, grants have been budgeted with the input from the EB, SOPCO, and the IFMC officials to suit uh, what are the needs and what is, going, is this money going to be spent on. 
also for this uh, upcoming General Assembly, uh, we're going to have the first financial management and administration workshop. Um, uh, moreover, I have been finalizing all TAP recipients preparations. We have had, we're having represent, uh, representatives from all of IMSA regions and um, they have followed uh, the financial IOGs and as well as the constitution of bylaws to be selected. I have been working with VPM to follow up on the membership fee plans, uh, payment plans for this term and last term, as well as uh, following up on the suspended NMOs uh, due to debts and the one, especially the ones that are in risk of losing their IFMSA membership for uh, this term or the upcoming term. Also, I have been in touch with uh, former for, with uh, BPF 1415's lawyer for the debt uh, the debt payment. We have uh, received the first installment of this debt. This uh, the second installment is to come this week or the next uh, or the next next week, and we're still uh, we still need three uh, more installments from uh, this person's side. Please, next slide. Thank you. Uh, I have also been following up with President 1415 for the uh, for the 1415 financial report that is to be updated. Uh, well, I have confirmed my fund, fundraising team and been working on the funding requests and reimbursements for uh, the IFMSA officials and um, other IT members that request this. Um, every regional meeting that has uh, has happened has. Uh, we have implemented the ethical fundraising framework and also like checking the sponsorships along with BBPRC to see that they are in line as well as the uh, the, the, the GA sponsors. Uh, also, I have been following up with Paris WHA Finance Coordinator, Coordinator is just one, <laughs> uh, for the budget construction, construction as well as the grants that they, they are receiving so that we have the same information in both of our uh, tracking documents. Um, fine, not finally, but um, I have been working on as well with BPF 16, 17, and 18, 19 to finalize the financial reports, as these are very needed for the banking registration that is to happen in Denmark. And uh, I have been working on other financial issues and, investi and ongoing investigations regarding finances for this first half of the term. Thank you very much for hearing me. Okay, so now we come to capacity building. Uh, since the beginning of the term, for basically for capacity building, the plan was to focus on two main points, uh, animals development and trainers education. That's why in this term we created a new position in the ITU to development assistant, which is meant to be to work on capacity building development on the national level in the animals. Um, so from the beginning of this term, we started to focus on animals development. First thing we did is the baseline assessment. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that concrete data about what is the level of development of CB in our animals. That's why we started to create a baseline assessment where we gathered all the data we need from each animal in IFMSA in order to develop a plans for their CB development uh, for the future. And based on that data, the plan is to uh, build the capacity building body system where we pair animals uh, according to their uh, levels of development in order to learn from each other and share their experiences. So the baseline assessment was gathered. Uh, and now we are in the process of creating the body system, which we will create it before uh, March meeting Rwanda. Uh, I ask all animals, in case you didn't fill the baseline assessment, please do approach your CBRA and make sure that you have the data recorded within our uh, CBIT team so that we can work and help in order to develop CB in your animal. Uh, moving on, we implemented also one of the old workshops in IFMSC, which was the Capacity Building Builders Workshop. Paulina, can you go back, please? Thank you. The CBB workshop. Uh, this workshop is focused to build capacity building on the national level and local level in the NMOs. So this workshop was uh, like we already facilitated the workshop in the AMR, and the workshop also will be facilitated hopefully in the next regional and uh, international meetings as well. Uh, moving on to the pilot course, which is one of the IFMC strategy part. As Paulina mentioned, we're already working on that. Uh, we created the major outline of the course, which will be divided into organizational skills adding to that skills that that's that comes to soft skills and trainers education and standing committee uh, education and specific parts in each standing committees and this course uh, will be working on it after march and hopefully we will finish it by july so that we can 
um, like upload all the data online on the Moodle platform by uh, August, before the end of this term. Uh, we also worked on developing the SRT manual. We had an old manual, but now we are working on developing a new one according to the new proposals that we are uh, voting on in March meeting. So the manual will, the group already formed and they will start working on it immediately after March. Next, then the next point that we are working on this term is the trainers education part. So first of all, is the model for trainers education. We already opened the call for smaller group and we have some like some members, but we also require more members. So if you know any experienced trainers who are motivated to help us in developing this framework, so please do approach me or any one of the CBITs that we can add you to the small working group that's working on that part. The idea of this framework is to create a facilitation toolkits for different facilitation methodologies, plus uh, updating the online online Moodle platform and also working on the resources center and developing it for, for trainers in IFMSA. Uh, moving on to the competency model, uh, we started working on the competency models at the beginning of the term. However, we didn't implement it yet because the model platform was not ready. Uh, we will start implementing it this week. We are having like three to four sessions uh, for the IT members of the IFMS and officials uh, where they will attend to learn the basic needs that they need in order to uh, be more effective and facilitate sessions in the branch meeting. And this model will be created and will be handed over to the next IT so that it will be ready and implemented in the beginning of the term since we are already late now in implementing it. Um, the next thing that we started working on it, and we will open the call after March, the trainers camp. We are creating the concept note for the camp, and we will open the call for NMOs to host this camp. The idea is that we host two camps uh, before after March, before August meeting. And um, the main point of this camp is where it's a place where trainers can gather from different regions and can learn more skills and develop and share experiences between each other. For more details of the camp, you can find the concept note when we will share it after March. Next, please. Okay, so for SRTs, we made two new chains this term for SRTs. We updated the SRT preliminary permission document uh, to make it easier for animals to fill that document and also to make it easier for the CBIT to require only the necessary information that we need and keep track on the SRTs that happening in IFMSA. And we also created a workshop template for all workshops in IFMSA, which also should be attached to the SRT preliminary permission. And these are proposed as annexes to the CBIG to be voted upon in March meeting Rwanda. Uh, so far, we had 20 SRTs happened in all five regions, and there are also many SRTs that will happen after March immediately, some in April and some in May as well. Uh, for certification process, we were we were planning the process of certification, and we agreed with the VPA that we will start issuing all the certificates after March. We also have a plan for the past certificates that we don't have the data uh, to open a call on the server for people to sign up for certificates and send us the data again, and we will issue certificates with the help of Sania. Next. Capacity building IOGs. Uh, starting on the IOGs, you know that this is a very complicated matter and it was adopted last year in Slovenia and we are working thoroughly to improve the IOGs and make it the best way possible. So we, uh, we propose a lot of amendments to the current IOG that we voted on in, in Rwanda. And as Niboja mentioned, we already have a slot which is called Capacity Discussions in the GA, where I ask all animals to attend there and share their idea and opinions in order to have a, an informed decision making in the plenary. We, also, we are also hosting an online discussion, as mentioned yesterday, tomorrow on the 20th of February. So please, if you want to attend, do approach me or anyone of the IT to add you to that online platform for online discussions. One of the main things that we are working on is me and the VPF, which is a trainer OC contact mandate. And we uh, discussed this and we also asked for input from the AB members and subcom members. And based on their recommendations, we proposed change to the mandate and we already shared it with you on the NMO server. Um, we also reviewed the standing committee capacity building regulations. We reviewed the scope of scholar regulations, scholar regulations, and uh, propose some change that will in order to be aligned to the CBIOGs and they will this change will also be voted on some in March meeting and the others in August meeting. I will continue reviewing the other standing committee CB regulations from now to August in order to like by, by the end of the term to have all the CB regulations aligned based on the CBIOGs that are already adopted. In case you have any question, please do approach me or anyone of the CBIT and we were more than happy to help you to develop capacity building in your animals. Thank you. It's me. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Tarek. So I'm going to follow the recommendation of the last GA when they told the CEO to be more uh, open and transparent. And I'm going to share my story of the day. Um, I was on a train after external meeting to go to the airport. And then I slept. 
I wake up, I find myself in place where they store all of these trains together and I was alone in the train and nobody was there and I was screaming and screaming and screaming, nobody heard me. But then I discovered an emergency uh, button and I pressed that and the police came and picked me up. So yeah, now I'm safe and present at the meeting. Uh, so for the updates of, uh, I haven't say advocacy and external relations, and this is the term I actually prefer to use because it's way more accurate than to say external representation. Um, slides. Next. Yes. Uh, so, so far we have 32 meetings attended by uh, LOs uh, and regional directors and other people uh, approved by the, ex the executive board. Um, we, uh, we have launched external meetings attendance restructuring, which aim is to actually have a goal-based attendance. Uh, an email was shared with animals uh, explaining the process uh, in length, if you want to check that. Uh, but basically, in a nutshell, uh, now, when the, when an LO wants to attend the conference, they they have a clear strategic planning on the goals that they will reach and the action that they will undertake to achieve these goals. Uh, and based on that, on that, the executive board takes the decision to approve the meeting. Uh, we work in the United Nations systems um, with two platforms, which are the UN Major Group on Children and Youth. MGCY and ICMU, the International Coordination Meeting on Youth Organizations. Um, I coordinate the relation with these two entities that allow us to be represented in ECOSOC, uh, which is the UN uh, Economic and Social Council. Um, so for MGCY, we recently applied to be focal point of the SDG3. And for ICMU, we are part of the task force, which is the core team of the movement. Uh, we have established a new connection with the African Union, uh, which is like very new. Uh, I met with the African Union Envoy on Youth, and we started discussing collaborations between IFMC and the African Union, which is very promising. Next. Uh, you can find all the reports uh, available at the external meetings calendar that was shared with you over email, and it's also in the drive. Uh, and now this is a new feature when you apply for external meetings, there's actually one form. So when you open the, can, the application form, it will automatically include the candidate form that needs to be signed and stamped by the NMO. The reason is some people apply for a meeting and then forget to send the candidature form. And this is why uh, I incorporated both in one form so it's easier and more user friendly. Uh, we, as you might know, we offer internships in the World Medical Association. Now we have the chance to have Yambura from Kenya representing IFMC there and working as an intern. Um, and next week we will launch the new call for next intern. So if you're interested in actually doing that, stay tuned. Um, else we have Global Health Advocates workshops happening in the General Assembly. Uh, this one, but also in regional meetings. We had one in the EMR, and we are going to have one in the European uh, regional meeting. So if you're interested to know more about advocacy, external relations, uh, what, what is it to attend to UN meetings, how to wear, what to say, how to approach people, don't hesitate to attend this workshop. Next. Um, this is brand new, new, new thing. It's the External Affairs International Team. Um, so we have a general assistant, assistant, a policy assistant, and capacity building assistant, but also five regional assistants. So it's, um, if you want me to put it in an easy way, it's like primary healthcare. It's the first contact between members and international uh, external affairs. So if an animal needs help or assistance, um, and close assistance, they might reach out to their regional assistant directly. And if they want something specific to capacity building or policy making, they might reach out to uh, capacity building assistant or the policy assistant. Uh, this is the first year we're having this international team. So of course we will evaluate at the end of the term. However, you know that they are there and that they are here to assist you. And they're working closely, not only with me, but also with the regional directors. Next. Um, now I'm going to discuss IFMC policies and for March meeting 20, 
miss that uh, policy process, there's a policy reviewing committee report that's going to be published one day before the first plenary, um, reporting of recommendation if these policies that are submitted to the general uh, secretary uh, should be adopted or not. Of course, the decision to adopt policy or not is to animals. Um, so we trust you will read the policies and give your opinions toward them. Um, there will be no policy discussion at the March meeting, um, as we didn't have one last year as well. Uh, the reason is that uh, the policies had a long period of amendments and so on. So every opinion had the chance to be heard and in every different uh, approach could have been incorporated. Um, and the deadline is actually tonight uh, for the final amendments, if there are. Um, last but not least, we're going to have a policy making uh, session in, uh, in the GA. Um, this is a session to discuss about policy making in general and um, see animals' perception towards how I think they do its policy making. Next. Um, yes, this is my last slide. So in this March, March meeting, we're going to have a session called External Affairs Behind the Scenes, in which every liaison officer would share a specific thing about their area of expertise. So you can hear things like um, the Paris Agreement or the implementation of universal health coverage in the UN, uh, such specific themes. Um, so this is a chance to have specific information about the areas of work of the different LOs. Um, the theme event is the role of primary health care in achieving universal health coverage. Um, we're going to have sessions about MOUs and policies and another session to update you about what's happening in terms of external affairs and meetings attended. So yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out at vpe at um, or any kind of informal way of communication. Thank you. Oh, that's also me, Ish. Um, this is something between me and Gabriela, so I will leave her the pleasure to actually discuss XREP and finances. Okay, thank you, Tarek. Uh, yes, this is the tracking sheet that I'm using for all the funding requests that, uh, well, are mostly the LOs and the original directors are asking uh, for, I mean, for them to go to uh, different external meetings. They have been sorted out in this way. Uh, please, next slide. But uh, as we know, like the IFMSA budget is very fragile. And for this year, we uh, have a total of 16,000 euros allocated for this purpose. But thanks uh, to Tarek and the effort of the liaison officer, we have managed to get like uh, to save 8,985.67 euros from external fundings, discounts, um, Covered fees, etc. So this is really, uh, this is like really great shout out to them because we're saving money. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, so if uh, any of you wants uh, has questions, please direct them to ev at ifmsa.org. And please also do not forget to check the survival kids as well as the president's agenda for this uh, for this March meeting and I think that will be it if I'm not mistaken next slide yes thank you very much yes uh, thank you Gabby and the rest of the EB um, so as she said you can forward all your questions to the EB but uh, since we're also here you we have some time for questions and we also opened up the YouTube so you can ask any questions you have there as well. Um, but otherwise, for those that uh, are going to be watching this later on, um, please use uh, epi.fmc.org to ask any questions you might have. And we'll do our best to answer all of them before the GA itself. But do we have any questions right now from the people here? There's an option in Zoom to ask questions, but you can also ask to YouTube.
Okay, um, because we don't have any questions, uh, we're gonna um, uh, finish the webinar right now. Uh, but please, um, we included the Q&A sessions in the, the GA, but uh, these sessions have uh, a lot of other reports and uh, other um, submissions where, for which you might uh, want to ask questions on the spot as well. So if you have any questions for the EB, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, thank you everyone for attending and uh, those that watched us uh, after the webinar as well. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, thank you.